Have you noticed that your Shopify website is kind of being a little bit hinky lately? Maybe your conversion rates are down, maybe your bounce rates have gone up, or maybe it just seems like there's bugs stuck in the back of your Shopify site and you have no idea what is going on. Well, I've been hearing people talk about this and I decided to get my Shopify guru friend, Anna Tillotson on to talk all about why this might be happening. Welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast, where I, Selena Knight, share strategies, interview retail revolutionaries, and delve into the minds of e-commerce experts to help you grow a profitable, independent retail or e-commerce business. If you're stuck in a rut, or if you feel like business is way harder than it should be, or you've overachieved all of the things that you've set out to and are wondering what to do next, or how do I even make this better? I know that you're going to love today's episode. Hey there, and welcome back to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. If you've been around for a while, thank you so much for letting me share this time with you. And if you're brand new, hi there and welcome. Now, as we get into Q2, I cannot believe that we are like a week off quarter two of the year. With Q1 fast disappearing, saying goodbye, I know that you are already sitting down, well, hopefully you are already sitting down to map out what Q2 looks like for you. And maybe this is the time where you kind of go, right, I have three months down into the year, I really need to get my crap in a pile and get myself sorted. Maybe Q1 was awesome, maybe not so awesome. Either way, you know that you have to set yourself up for the next 90 days in order to achieve the things that you want. Now, maybe some of that is going to be around your website and optimizing your website. And so if that is the case, you're going to love today's episode with my friend Anna Tillotson from House of Cart. But if you're feeling a little bit stuck, maybe you feel like you've hit a plateau or You're just doing 11 billion freaking things and you don't know what you should be putting your time and effort into or the concept of a 90 day plan is so foreign to you that you don't think you could even attempt to sit down and work out what you need to achieve. If either of those, either, there was three, right? If any of those things sound like you need a little bit of help, a little bit of focus, a little bit of clarity and you are heading off to read gift fairs in Sydney then I am here to tell you that my team and I are going to be hosting a series of complimentary retail strategy sessions. So you can come to us, you can tell us, pour your heart out, tell us what you're hoping to achieve, and we'll do a mini analysis of your business and help you map out a plan of action. Now, because they are complimentary and because the fair only goes for four days and because we are human, I only have a limited number of spots for those. So If you want to grab one, head over to, this is a little bit different URL to normal, right? So pay attention, head over to scaleyourstore.com forward slash read. That was scaleyourstore.com forward slash read. You can book in your complimentary session. There's a little questionnaire. It takes like 45 seconds to fill out just so we can come prepared. Book your spot, fill in your little questionnaire and we will see you on the day. Now, if you don't need that clarity, feel free to come by and say hello. Tell us what you love, what you'd love to hear on the podcast. We love meeting you guys in person. So if you want to book one of those sessions, scaleyourstore.com forward slash read. And they are filling up fast, so get in quickly. Okay, so maybe you're looking at either your website, your conversion rates, your bounce rates, your sales Whichever pillar you are working on, if it has anything to do with your Shopify site, then you have to listen to today's episode because quite a few of my clients and in quite a few groups that I'm in, I'm hearing people say things like, oh, my website's not doing what it's supposed to. My postage isn't working out. The conversion to US dollars isn't working. It's really slow. My bounce rate's gone up. So if your website, your Shopify website has been a little bit hinky, then you need to listen to what Anna has to say. Basically, it is time to upgrade to Shopify 2.0. But before you do that, you have to listen to her hints, her tips, and her very, very important advice on how long this is going to take, how long you can wait before you implement this change, and 
the the hacks that she gives you to make sure that it goes off without a hitch. So spoiler alert, you can't avoid doing this. If you are on the Shopify platform, this is something you are going to have to do really, really soon. So listen in to today's episode with Anna Tillotson from House of Cart. Hey there, and welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. If you are on Shopify, which is my favorite platform, as you would already know, and I've had my own store on Shopify as well. And I totally wish that Shopify was around when I was on. I have been on so many platforms, OzCommerce, Magento, when it was like not easy, Magento 1.0. And I think the reason I love Shopify is just simply the ease of making it work and making it look beautiful. But if you're on Shopify and you have heard about Shopify 2.0, then you probably have some questions around it. So I brought my friend, Anna from House of Cart on to walk you through everything you need to know and why you have to change over to Shopify 2.0 if you are on the Shopify platform. Hey there, Anna, welcome. Hey, thank you very much for having me on, Selena. It's lovely to be here um, and lovely to check Shopify 2.0. Uh, and I also must mention as well, I also wish Shopify was around originally. I originally started my first e commerce store on Big Commerce um, and I ended think- up in. Yeah, I, was say, I don't and, even think big commerce existed when I started. <laughs> no, um, and I remember how clunky that was originally. And then I thought there's got to be something better. Actually, discovered, <clears throat> excuse me, Shopify, and that's how I landed up building and creating a business, House of Cart, which is now Shopify Design and Development Agency or non-agency, I call it. Um, purely for the fact that yeah, I love Shopify for that reason. You know, it's designed for people to use and manage themselves. Um, you know, if you've got a little bit of know-how, anyone can start up a Shopify store. And that's what I love about it is the usability. Oh, I just, I think the usability, but also that it looks so nice. I mean, I will be, this, this just goes to show how long I've been in the game. We had (laughs) Flash on our first website. I had to learn how to code Flash. And Mm -hmm. it was just a little, it was a little daisy tumbleweed thing going across the screen, but. I would love to see that now. Uh, you can if you go to okay here is one of my hacks guys write this one down there is a website called waybacktimemachine.com and it takes uh screenshots of websites just random websites all Mm -hmm. over the world and if you go to somebody's website if they've been lucky enough to have been captured, you can go back and see oh. all of the different iterations, which is great because sometimes, I don't know about you, but you get comparisonitis and you mm-hmm. think, oh, that store has such a great website. You go back five years and have a look at the website <laughs> they had then and you see realize, where they <laughs> see where they started. A blaster in the past. Yep. And, you know, that's so true when you look at, you know, the stores that we're putting out now are just simply stunning. Um, the new themes and now especially on 2.0, they're just beautiful. They're absolutely, you know, seamless, elegant. Um, yeah, and it just shows in the branding. It's just, yeah, it just, they look beautiful these days. Okay, everybody wants the beautiful store that other mm. people look up to. And and mm-hmm. let's be honest, we want a great customer experience as well. But as merchants, you want to make money. Like you can have the best website in the world, but if nobody's coming there or they can't actually check out or you haven't got upsells and things like that, mm-hmm. email captures in place, at the end of the day, you're not going to be profitable. Absolutely. So before we jump into all those things that I know that you are absolutely, we could totally nerd out on all those things. Tell us about what the heck is Shop, Shopify 2.0 and why do we even need to care if we're on the platform? Okay. So, you know, ever since obviously with COVID, everything's been moving really quickly. Ecom was already moving very, very quickly. Um, you know, in the last five years, it's just, it's insane how fast it's moving. Shopify have been moving lightning fast as well. We saw a real need to change from the original functionality they had. We call it, you know, Shopify 1.0. And launching 2.0 was an opportunity for them to step up their game for their merchants and to allow merchants to be able to build better stores easily and have more accessibility to, you know, design functions in the back end um, and just little things that were missing on the 1.0 platform. So the biggest thing, you know, I think one of the main things that Shopify 2.0 provides is sections everywhere. It's really as simple as that. So the way we build and the way we design and create a store now, you talk about the user journey, it used to be ensuring your homepage was amazing and had everything on it that everyone needed because that was the base, right? And then you'd push them to a product and they'd come back to look at something else. That's no longer the case. You know, every single page inside your store now 
is built out to be a mini homepage. And we're talking about moving to the product page. If they're landing on the product page from a redirection from somewhere else in Ab, they don't need to go anywhere else. We can now design so that the whole product page is a storytell. It has a journey. It has little snippets of information. It has a little bit about you. It has trust factor, has reviews, has more collections, more products. It's a whole journey in itself. Um, and it doesn't just stop there. You know, we can do this inside the cart. We can do this on collection pages. And now the other big thing is building out content pages. So before we were using Pagefly, you know, all these other page builders that would slow us down, they cost us money, they're external to the site, they're clunky and hard to use. Um, you know, now we build our pages out inside the theme. And again, we can use sections. So we can beautifully design, you know, previously we had these page, the tiny little crappy page builder in the back of Shopify where you dump a picture and dump some copy. You can't edit it. You can't really make it look in any way aesthetically pleasing. That's gone. So now we're jumping in, we're building pages. So your About Us page can be stunning. It can have beautiful graphics, beautiful sections, beautiful copy placed in beautiful spots um, to really emphasize the whole brand feel throughout the entire site. So that's one of the biggest components to 2.0 is the sections everywhere. It sounds to me, and I, I can't say I have jumped into 2.0, but it sounds to me like something that I have been an advocate for for a very long time, which is landing pages. Yeah. So we've Absolutely. always said products like Zipify landing pages to build out that entire customer mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. And you can have a product page that tells the story. It can have yeah. video, it can have the testimonials. Yeah but it doesn't look like a basic product page. So it yeah, sounds absolutely. like 2.0 is kind of like they a landing page builder. That problem. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, landing pages are now, and also the themes are coming with additional templates. We can have page templates for feet order. We can have page <gasps> templates for different, you know, you can allocate your product to different templates where this was so hard before, you know, we'd be charging clients to duplicate in the back end, to duplicate code and create all these templates. The process was so different before. Um, now it's as simple as being inside the theme builder, creating a new template, making it look pretty. You know, you might have three collections and each collection needs to have different information. So you can create different collection templates, allocate your products accordingly. So there's so much of a variety of information given in the right spots. Um, so there's not, not so much movement around the site with the potential of drop off because they get bored or they've lost interest. All of that information is now in that one spot. So absolutely landing pages are now you know, something that you could easily achieve um, inside your thing. It sounds like they've really taken on board user experience. So okay. from the customer, mm -hmm. I mean, as a merchant, you love being able to do these things without having mm -hmm. the extra apps and slowing the website down. But from a customer's perspective, you said pre-order. I love using pre-order with my clients. Like it's the yeah. best it way. It was so hard before. So it difficult. such a challenge. And, and just, you know, and managing that expectation around pre-order was difficult yeah. because you'd have to build out email flows mm -hmm. and updates and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But it sounds to me like now, if you want to offer pre-order, you can make it really clear and not just put in the text, this Absolutely. will not be shipped mm -hmm. until yeah, a certain just date. Yeah, changing your title. Yeah. So, you know, we can do all of those things. Um, and, you know, it brings me to the fact that, you know, this isn't just a simple change. 2.0 is not just a hit the button and boom, like on your on your iPhone overnight it updates and if you've got all these new little great bells and whistles, it doesn't work like that. We're now building on a different framework. So provided, you know, whether you're aware of what theme you have and what version you have, um, you know, when you download your new version, your 2.0 compatible theme for whatever theme you've purchased or you jump on a new free theme, um, you will get a blank shell. Um, you will get a whole new theme that's just, you know, it's all different and laid out very differently. The theme customizer is different. The way we work inside the theme customizer is different. So there's a lot to learn inside there. And as I say, you do get a blank shell. So obviously still your products, everything in the back, you know, that back end of your Shopify is still set in stone. Everything needs to be recreated. And, and as, as I mentioned, now with content pages, so regardless that you've got that copy there we're now recreating all those so all your faqs get built out again all your about us pages all your stockers pages all your content you know information pages get recreated um so it is a bit of a process it's not just a simple click of the button and you're done um but this is now the time to do it you know we are skyrocketing so fast in e-com you know it's, it's it's just a leading industry for speed right now um and it's only going to get crazier 
And, you know, the fact is if you're not on 2.0 yet, it's not going to be forced upon you. You don't have to even leave your site, but, you know, you are going to get left behind. Um, it's something you need to think about. And this is the time to really, if you've been thinking about stepping up your game, this is all the more reason to do so. Um, this is the perfect opportunity to step everything up to really work towards making your store a success. It sounds to me like this is a really great opportunity for people to take that step back and audit what their website looks like you know I think everybody has website shame of some degree at some point you always wish you had this or you wish you had that this sounds like a great opportunity to go now that I'm going to have to move Mm -hmm. what do I really want it to look like because as we as we grow as a business what you like your level of expertise changes your your knowledge of your customer changes you you get a more in-depth knowledge and you have conversations with your customers you get customer complaints and so you probably have this bank of information where yeah. you haven't really done anything it. with it. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it visible and is it really available? You talk about, you know, all the issues that may come across. You know, I see so many of my clients who, you know, they've been going for three or four years. They've constantly got this problem list, yet they've never created an FAQ from it. You know, and that time consume of that customer service is so massive. And we say to them, now is the time. Like often we just won't push their store to finish to go live and say, you need to go back and get an FAQ. Once you even five questions, just something just enough something. to show that you care and that you've got, you know, that support is there and that you've got that initiation of how can we help you to solve your problem? Um, yeah, and absolutely. It's just about now is the time to really push. Are you, you know, who you were as a brand when you launched five years ago and what you wrote about us, which is probably, you know, you had, we have a clue about how to write an about us. It might've been, this is me and my family and this is why I started my business. But now what are you? What is it? Your Why is your why now? And so it's all about, you know, looking at all of your copy and your content. And really now this is your chance to just you put your best foot forward and, you know, have that polished professional store if you want to convert. And I challenge you, if you're rewriting your about us page to not <laughs> use the word unique and not use the Ooh, word okay. affordable. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to mention that. That's great. I like that. Yes. Because let's try and think outside the box people, you know, creative words. And, there are yeah. very little unique stores realistically. Days, and yeah. you know what? I don't necessarily want affordable. Sometimes mm-hmm. I want va- it's value, right? It's, it's, value. it's what we yeah, value. value. And maybe and I don't want affordable. value is different. And it's about, you know, wording that in such a way that you hit me and I go, you know what? That really means something to me. Yes. And, and, you may turn people off if you use the word affordable, but that's, that's a story. I just did a podcast about that. <laughs> Go back and find that one. <laughs> so you said earlier on that we're not going to be made to go to 2.0. Do you what, think, do, I was going to say, do you think that like with your expertise and with people moving to 2.0, mm-hmm. we know it's faster. We know it's going to give mm-hmm. a better user experience. Mm-hmm. What do you think is kind of the time frame for that people should give themselves because we all work to deadlines Mm -hmm. to get themselves moved over or just be left behind? And then don't come complaining to people like Anna and myself when you go, nobody's coming to my store anymore or I've got a really big bounce rate or I'm getting traffic, but nobody's Mm. buying. Mm. Look, it's, you know, it's, it comes down to what you prioritize in your business. Priority should be is increasing conversions and, you know, keeping the wheels moving. Um, you can leave it you cannot do it but it is like anything if you leave it you know there is not going to be a lot of support for the 1.0 you're not going to have upgrades because you can't upgrade your 1.0 anymore so mobile optimization is going to be left behind any glitches and problems and bugs are all going to be left in that store and if you're not a tester on your store if you're not someone who regularly tests your store you have no idea so you're potentially having bounce traffic from people coming and going wow just terrible experience I'm out of there um so for me, we're saying to people, you know, you need to put this at the top of your list. Um, everybody is jumping on board. You know, we've since November, it's just been back to back to back with what we've been doing for our clients and new clients. It's just a constant stream of rebuilds um, because people just know they need to step it up. You know, you're, if your competitors are doing it and you're not, you're not going to look as good as them. Um, so, yeah, like, as I say, you know, there is no force. You're not forced to do this, but it's like anything. If you don't do it, your store is going to get left behind. It's going to be start to break. Um, but you've got to look at it from a different point of view, all the positives that you're going to get. You know, there's so many components that are the positive side of this, and that's what you've got to look at. Not that it's hard, not that it might cost you money to get someone to do it, uh, not the effort you've got to put in. It's about what you're going to see for that effort and what you're going to gain from it. Um, 
it's going to be huge. There's a few other things as well. You know, apps inside the theme now are one of the massive things. Um, so now we're actually, the apps get loaded inside the theme. We've got manipulation inside the actual theme editor to place apps everywhere um, and those sorts of things. So now we're not running externally from the back end of Shopify with apps. So that's also going to help with speed. Um, so all these little factors you've got to look at and go, you know what, it's just something I need to put at the top of my list and I need to work towards getting it done in the next six months. If not, you know, by the end of the year, you're probably looking at it's, yeah, you're getting pretty late in the game. I'd be putting it on my list on my, you know, at least my 90 day goals for the next 90 days. I think what you said there is so important is that you can be reluctant to change over just because let's be honest, you're probably thinking I can't afford it or I don't have the time. Yep. But at the end of the day, your theme is no longer going to be supported. Mm -hmm. Your apps are no yeah. longer going to support 1.0. So it's mm -hmm. not a case of when, you know, if I have to change over, it's a case of, am I prepared to lose money yeah. by not changing over what's sooner the, rather than what's later? What's the result of not doing it? You know, yep. yeah. What's the result of not doing it? And, you know, your, your store and your reputation dropping down because it's very hard to get a customer back once they've come and had a really bad journey. You know, yeah. chances are you won't see them again on your store. So Having some, you know, having, again, you talk about, you know, having a store that you're proud of, you know, this is your chance to really put that foot forward. And we're also saying to people, you know, if you're in that mindset, okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, you know, back off from your marketing for a while. If you're not happy with your store and you are getting bounced, right, back off from marketing and driving traffic, get it done and then amp things back, back up again. I think people forget that there are two, this is something we teach inside of Scale Your Stories, there are two parts of the sales process. One is the traffic. The other part mm -hmm. is the conversion. And so often I hear people say, I'm paying a company to do my Facebook ads, but I'm not getting any sales. And mm -hmm. it's like, but they're driving the traffic. It's your website that's not making the sales. Yeah. So yeah. they don't know which part of that piece is broken. It's that your baby is ugly conversation <laughs> it needs to be had. You know, let's just be real. And it's a hard one, but you know it's got to be done and that's the thing and we find I also have the same with a lot of my clients that come you know they come to me in exactly that same conversation I look at their sites and I just say you need to just stop all marketing now you just need to stop driving that traffic right now because it's just a bottomless bit of money until your site is at a you know at a standard that converts and it's not the agency's mm. fault like their job is to get the people to the website it's your job yeah. it's your website's job to do the selling yeah. they can only do yeah. They can't and somewhere along the line, happening. it's just a disconnect of communication of someone just being, you know, game enough to say, you know what, you need to be, you know, you know, your store. And we're lucky we work with a lot of really good marketing agencies and small little freelancers that are really prepared to say that up front. We're just not going to start driving traffic. Go and, you know, go and talk to Anna at House of Cart, go and talk to someone else about what you can do with your site before you do that. And, you know, I'm really, I love seeing that conversation going around at the moment because, you know, it's everybody helping everybody, which is what it needs to be these days is collaboration over competition, yeah. you know. You always need a cheerleader, but sometimes mm -hmm. you need someone to just smack you over the back of the head and say, <laughs> this is the problem. Yeah. And you can't wear all hats, you know. You know, when I talk to most of my clients, you know, you don't know everything. You don't, sometimes, you know, there's components you have no idea about and that's why it's about seeking out help where you need it. Um, and finding, you know, trusted people that you can get advice from that's going to help you. Yes, and not just take your money. Yeah. All right, so I've got a few questions for people who are thinking about this. The first one is, what kind of time frame would you expect to, the, you know, let's say the intermediate DIYer, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. long would you expect them to have to put aside to make sure that, they could transition over to 2.0 and know that everything looked good yep. and was working and they mm -hmm. tested it. What kind of time frame are you looking at for that? So as I mentioned before, <clears throat> excuse me, as I mentioned before, you know, changing over is not just a click of the button, everything's not still in place, and you are looking at a new functionality and wireframe to start dealing with, right? And as I mentioned to you, there's now page build outs, there's product page build outs, there's template build out. You know, it used to be like we would say, you know, take you can jump on and build a store in five to six hours. You know, with 2.0, that's not the case. You're looking at a good solid, you know, my devs and my designers who, you know, are pretty pretty fast and pretty skilled, um, you know, two to three days, we've got them on a job doing rebuilds. Um, and that's everything, just a first preview and then making sure we go over everything because there's so many more sections. There's so many more pages. There's so many more screens and edits and functionality to work through and options to choose from to really look 
and figure out how you're going to have it the configuration. So yeah, it's definitely looking, you know, the 20 hour plus jobs now. Um, and just bearing in mind, your, guy, it, you your people know what they're doing. They know yeah, the options. Yeah, we're doing this they, day in and day out. You know, we yeah. do two to three rebuilds a week with my team um, for all our existing clients and just never ending new clients that come and everyone wanting to jump aboard. So yeah, we're getting pretty fast. Like we, you know, we specialize in only a seldom few themes um, that are our favorites and top of the top. So we know the themes in and out. We've, you know, we've been working them heavily every day. So, and even then, you know, but it's also, you know, we don't want to rush a job and nor should you rush your job. This is, as I say, the opportunity to make it shine. Um, and so really, you know, getting in there and just taking the time to make it look stunning. Do you have any examples and feel free to either share or not share the mm-hmm. names of the website that you have seen implement 2.0 and just take these features on board and have are just kicking it out of the park? Yeah, absolutely. So I can also share a couple of links after. Um, so one of the couple of stores we've got going on at the moment, I'm just going to point out my list. That, uh, Daily Orders is a client that I've had known for a very long time. If you haven't seen her store, she's amazing. She does these amazing order boards. Um, so she, we recently migrated her onto Flex 2.0 um, mm-hmm. from Out of the Sandbox, um, which is a stunning, stunning store. Um, and she's kicking goals because, you know, the Flex build is just stunning. Uh, let me just give me one quick second and I'm just going to open up for my last impulse builds that I've got. Um, give me one second, give me one second. Um, here we go. What, what kind of results have daily orders seen? Have they seen like lower so bounce just re- rates? She's or? just recently launched, so I can't give you any stats on her ones. We've only just launched her in the last couple of weeks. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing, yeah, people are just seeing people stay longer on the site, you know, people adding to cart more. Um, and the fact that they're getting that more trusted feel because they're getting more information on the on a certain page, on those landing page. So we're definitely seeing an increase. Um, site speed, obviously, is one of the huge ones. Um, mobile optimization being huge as well. So mobile-friendly themes are even more prevalent now. So the likes of Impulse and Prestige and Symmetry being our top three themes that we build on, um, the mobile optimization on those is is stunning now the options inside that are so much more than what they used to be um because that's the other thing you know people are building with these themes and just you know they're not looking across all devices about how you know how it looks on these different devices and thinking it looks great on my laptop you know but how does it feel with the mum that's sitting on her couch on her iphone you know what's the journey like for her yeah um i've just gone to the daily orders and i need one of those Isn't it amazing? We Isn't need one of those amazing? for like our marketing plan. We need to um, connect with her. Yeah. Um, another lady I've been working with, she's actually getting her to make a custom board up for like what you should be monitoring. On we need our 90 day store. plan up there. Yeah. How cool is it? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Her brand's epic. So we're, yeah. You get, we're you getting get distracted. So, so, so tri-tracked on there. Um, so we've got like another couple of stores. We've just launched Billy Cart Kids. So she's moved on to Impulse 2.0 as well. Um, and what kind of um, results has she seen? Yeah, so she's also just launched, so but super, a lot faster. The customer journey on her store is a lot better as well. Um, she was able because of the kind, you know, it's baby shoes, but it's there's very specific, it's very specific on what she needs to tell her customers. So she's able to tell that journey more. She's able to give that more information all the way through the store um, to push the conversion rate up. Um, who else have we got on here? I'm just looking down my list. Um, Lots of little fashion stores as well, which we've been launching recently. Nancy Joanna, French Addicts, and nice little ones as well. So at the end of the thing, I can pop up my portfolio link as well. We're, comp- we're constantly updating and we put on our portfolio, we put on what the theme is, is it 2.0 and what they're running. So we're trying to update that regularly, especially as we're rolling out all the 2.0s in the last month or two. Yeah. I mean, I guess you're saying it only sort of has been around for a few months. So yep. it's... Yep. It took until it rolled out in about August, um, but then theme te- follows suit. So really only the top themes only locked those down in about November, I think we started. So we've really just been starting to crank through all the rebuilds um, since coming back after Christmas. Cool. All righty. So I think, I think you've just kind of inundated people with information and hopefully <laughs> we have hit you over the back of the head with if you are on Shopify, this is not something you can ignore. Like you are going to have to build it into your 90-day plan. Absolutely. If you don't have time to do it yourself, speak to someone like Anna at House of Cart or somebody trusted. And uh, uh, that was my other question I was going to ask you before I got sidetracked by the beautiful mm-hmm. order boards, which is 
if you are looking to outsource this kind of project and if you're listening to this podcast, you know who I'm talking about, who has <laughs> one of my clients has somebody who is building out a new website and it has been dragging mm -hmm. on someone in-house. It's been dragging on for like six months. And now oh, I've God. heard this conversation. I'm thinking, I really hope my, my, like as soon as I get off here, I'm going to be messaging her. Are you, did yeah. they build this on 2.0? But my question is, if you are outsourcing I've, I've had a few this, of those also the ones that have had long projects, and then what they're going to get handed right now is not too not going to work. So, yeah. yeah. If you're looking to outsource this, what questions do you need to be asking the agency or the freelancer to make sure that you're not getting taken for a ride? Yeah. Look, you know, you really need to be asking: Are they experienced in 2.0? Have they been building on 2.0 themes? Um, you know, and ask them those questions that I've answered today, you know, say to them, just ask, ask them the question, what are the benefits of 2.0? See what they come back with. Google it yourself. Like, I mean, it's not that hard to find out. It's all over Shopify's website. But if they can't give you some pretty solid answers, you know, on a phone call that you go, yep, I remember that, and you know, that's kind of right. Are they really aware of what Shop Shopify benefits are? And ask for like, some examples of the builds that they've been doing with 2.0. Um, because yeah, it is different, you know, and it is different. You got what, you know, this is this is your shot to do it. If you're going to put time, energy, money into this, you want to make sure you're working with someone that's going to really pull everything out of that theme and make it work for you and use its full capabilities and its full functionality. So how can you make sure that? And I know you and I have both. You've I've had an agency. You've got an agency. One of the most frustrating things is when people don't come prepared. And you end mm -hmm. up, your timeline gets blown out because they don't have the stuff that you need to yeah. do the transition, whatever that looks like. So if people are looking to outsource this, what do they mm. need to have ready? Mm -hmm. Or what do they need to go and get, you know, mood boards of or examples yeah. of so that when yeah. they come to someone like you, you have an idea of what's in their head? Mm -hmm. So it depends. You know, everyone's kind of different. So with, with my non-agency, how we work is... Um, you know, when you purchase a package with us, we send you all that to prepare you. So we send, you know, we send you a questionnaire and we ask you things like, you know, who are your competitors? What's your vibe? What are you trying to look like? What do you want to do? Why are you building a new website? Where are your pain points? What are the issues? Who are your target markets? So we ask you all those questions to get a real feel. Um, and it's also, you know, just looking at, you know, getting all your copy up to scratch. So making sure you've got an updated about us, make sure you've got an updated FAQ. Um, stepping up with all your imagery, getting all new images done to match all of that, um, making sure your product descriptions are ready to go, uh, making sure, you know, anything, you know, all your little trust icons, all those really val valuable little points that you want to make, things are ready to go. So, you know, any good agency or freelance that you work for, when you engage with them, you know, they should be providing something for you to, because I find a lot of my clients also come to me, they just, they just have no idea. They've got all this in their head and there's so much noise. Yep. And we do it that way. So when they get all that paperwork, it gives them something to bring them back down and something to work towards focus. checklists and focus. And this is what I suggest. And um, yeah, just that really one-on-one -on -one connect with where you're going and how they can hit the mark. Fantastic. And in terms of time frame, everybody's going to be, I said word time frame about 20 times. <laughs> in terms of expectations, if you went to an agency, I know you said it takes your people you know, around about yep. three days but let's be honest they're still onboarding they're still waiting yeah, for this yep. questionnaire yep. they're still waiting for assets all yep. the things how long should you expect and obviously you know how long is a piece of string but if I contracted an agency am I mm -hmm. expecting this back in a month two months three months look you know everyone runs their timelines different but for us um we have a two-week turnaround for all rebuilds wow. um and we take on two rebuilds, two rebuilds at a time per week so that we're dedicated to those builds and that client. But our process is a little different. On our start date, we have everything good to go. So there is a checklist and everything is ready to roll. And when we do start, so we just boom, we get in there and we get it done. Um, then normally after the two-week period, there's a preview and review. Um, and then you come back, we make changes, we get it where it needs to be before switching live. So depending on how busy the agency, it's not something, you know, if they're saying to you, you know, it's a six to eight week, um, turnaround time, you know, is you need to ask, is that lead time or is that actual work time? You know, it's not, it shouldn't be taking, you know, someone eight weeks process time. Um, you just need to be asking those questions. First, what is your actual lead time in terms of time frame, actually starting the work? 
And then, you know, I would expect, you know, a two to four week max turnaround for actual job time. That's provided you have got provided your crap everything. together yeah. Yeah. and Absolutely. you have everything ready. So Absolutely. don't put it on the agency yeah. if you have yeah. not got your ducks yeah. in a row. And I would say on the flip side of that, you know, there are we're also doing a lot of clients who just, you know what, they just not not up to getting new FAQ. They're not up to getting new about us. They're not, they're not in that space right now, but they're still moving to 2.0. We're just moving everything over. We're just getting it out. We're building it out with what we've got. Um, so, you know, don't shy away from the fact that, you know, I mean, yes, it is an absolute gold opportunity to do that. But if that's just not you right now, um, there's still no reason not to move over. You can still move everything you have. Um, you're still going to be in a way better position. You're going to have a faster store. You're going to have better content. You're going to have a better user experience regardless. So look at it from those two points of view as well which hopefully leads to lower bounce rates and higher sales. Yep. And then you're going to earn more money and have more money to put into time to get a copywriter to do all the things that go around in a big circle. So. Perfect. All righty. So if people are thinking, you know what, Anna, Sal, you've got me convinced, where can they find you to have a conversation about whether they, they're ready to move over to 2.0 or they're good to go and they want to get it, yep. get the ball rolling? Absolutely. So look, if anyone's interested in working with us, um, as I say, you know, mm. Shopify is our jam. Moving to 2.0 is our major jam right now. So you can reach out to me at hello at houseofcart.com.au. Um, jump on our website, houseofcart.com.au. I'll put all my links. I'm assuming there's somewhere I'll put the links. Um, and, you know, reach out. Just send me an email. Introduce yourself. Say, hey, just want to touch base. Send me a link to your store. I'll reply back. I've got a bit of a brief questionnaire that I'll ask you. And I'll jump on, have a little look at your store. Um, and then I can send you, you know, the links to our rebuild packages for moving on to 2.9. Alrighty. Well, thank you. I definitely think we've given everybody something to think about and hopefully enough of a kick up the butt to build this into their 90 day plan, either this quarter or next quarter. Absolutely. You know, 2022 is going to be massive for e-commerce and, you know, the best thing you can do for your brand right now is to just jump on this and get it done. Thanks, Anna. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You can find all of the show notes over at selenanight.com. If you found something that you heard today particularly useful, I'd love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And of course, feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit by listening to it. Want more retail biz strategies? You can watch the Bringing Business to Retail TV show where each week I'll answer a question or provide you with a simple, actionable retail biz strategy that you can implement in your business right away. If you have a question or a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Drop my team an email at podcast at and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great week.